The technology was returned by 30 submarines through a large commando action. Okay, let's pick up the scenario. We were originally talking about the spiriting out of the two spacecraft out of Berlin before the Allies arrived. Uh, we said that they were put aboard two submarines. They spent six months at sea, and they finally landed in Argentina. Now, from that point, they were taken into Antarctica, into a section of Antarctica called Queen's Mods Land. And there they disappeared, and uh, they were not heard of for some time. Now, intelligence sources, and of course, I was in the intelligence business at that time uh, with the, the agency. Reports indicated that they were in there and they were operative once again. Now, there was a major concern by world powers to go in and capture the technology and the two spacecraft, which they knew were in Antarctica. And the intelligence reports indicated that one known as Admiral Byrd was to be recommissioned and he was to be sent in there to retrieve the two saucers and also the technology and personnel associated with it. Re later reports indicated that Admiral Byrd was given eight months and unlimited funding to go in and uh, pull this thing uh, successfully off. But we also know that within eight weeks he was totally defeated. What do we know about uh, Operation High Jump, about Admiral Byrd's expedition in the autumn of 46, the early spring of 47, to the South Pole? And this is an expedition that has been almost forgotten, and it's very hard to come up with any information about it. Uh, the few articles that were published at that time in, uh, let's say, National Geographic magazine, would not give any clue to the real intention of that expedition. However, recently we discovered a, a unique documentary film in color, one hour long, made by the U.S. Navy. It was a massive naval operation that uh, involved uh, an aircraft carrier, uh, several battleships, an armed submarine, and probably another 20 supply and battleships. Um, it involved 4,000 troops, um, uh, U.S. troops, and the rumor is that there were also British and Russian contingents uh, within these 4,000 troops. It was a massive uh, naval operation. It was not as it has been presented to the public that it was a peaceful expedition to explore the natural resources of the South Pole. They descended to Little America, which is uh, the place of the previous Admiral Byrd landings on the South Pole. And then they started a massive uh, overflight over uh, the whole area of the South Pole, trying to locate the German base uh, that was established there uh, almost 10 years earlier. The Germans started somewhere in 1936-37, seriously exploring the South Pole. And by the time the war ended, the rumor is that they have established a massive underground colony with at least 100,000 um, scientists, researchers, elite SS troops, uh, children from Hitler Jugend, young boys and girls that were to become the seed of this new and uh, colony that was to be built under the, uh, the, uh, pr uh, the principles of the um, super race selection. What was it that Admiral Byrd found on the South Pole? Incredibly enough, in an official American Navy documentary film, we found footage of what Admiral Byrd found on the South Pole. He found giant freshwater, never freezing lakes with areas around them that were uh, free of any snow. And in that film we show footage of the uh, Navy planes landing in these lakes. But even more so, he found, uh, to his amazement, that his planes were disappearing very quickly. A lot of his planes uh, were attacked by anti-gravity devices that were operated by the Germans there, by anti-gravity saucers. A lot of them crashed 
into invisible barriers and disintegrated in mid-flight. This is an indication that the Germans had already perfected the force field shields and they were up and operational around the German colony at Neuschwabenland. When he was retreating, basically the whole operation lasted for one week. They started in the, at the end of February 47 and by the first week of uh, March they were through with uh, the whole operation and much, much earlier than scheduled and they departed. And in an interview at Buenos Aires on his way back, Admiral Byrd uh, made the incredible statement that the Third World War would probably be with an adversary coming from the polar regions of our planet, an adversary that has the ability to fly unobstructed from pole to pole. He was referring to the Germans at their south uh, polar colony at Neuschwabenland that were operating their um, anti-gravity craft with impunity and could fly circles around the globe and of course would shoot out of the sky any of the uh, attacking American planes.